Hello, hello everyone. Hello ladies and gentlemen. Um, good morning, good afternoon and good evening to you depending on whichever part of the world you are tuning in from. I'm so excited to welcome you to another edition of the Extra and Speed Life. And um, before we go into the technical analysis and details of the session, um, let's quickly run through our daily routine just to confirm that we are all on the same page. So if you can see my screen and you can hear my voice loud and clear without distortion, please um, let me know in the comment section by typing in hi, hello, whatever it is and just give me some positive feedback that we are good to go and we shall rock and roll thank you very much guys as you do so All right, all right, all right. I can see a handful of comment here. Thank you very much, guys. I'm from Usain One to Massey Zero Three. Ha he. I saw Rami's Sophie, and um, okay, I can see Ture here. Ture says is new with us. Glad to have you around. I'm always excited having newcomers in the house. Glad to have you around, Ture. And then I can see seven eight six eight nine. No, no, and my friend Leonardo DV, good morning to you, and thank you very, very much for this positive feedback. Hello, Carrie, glad to have you around with us. Good morning to you, too. All right, so I think um, it's on this note we will be kickstarting the session as all of the feedbacks project that we are all good to go this morning. And it's on this note I welcome you all to yet another promising edition on the x -Trend Speed Live technical analysis session, your daily dose of financial insights and trading strategies. My own name is Sheriff Dara Mola, and for the next one hour, I'm going to be your host as I will be taking you on a trading journey where we shall be dissecting the financial market structure from a technical standpoint using our basic tools such as trend lines key levels and chart patterns to unravel the potential trajectory for price action today and um, i encourage us all because i have quite interesting and insightful and of course simple trading setups that we can actually use to manage our existing positions while we also strategically position ourselves for today's trading session. In fact, we have a lot of um, um, interesting developments in the last 24 hours which has really affected this all the assets on our watch list. And in fact, we will be looking at this today and see how we will be uh, positioning ourselves for the next move. So buckle up, um, grab your beverage, your favorite beverages um, and let's dive right into the business and for those of you who are joining us for the first time you're highly welcome on board and i'm very excited to have you around with us this morning um if you're wondering what this is all about well as technical traders we usually gather here every day coming together as a community and engage in follow-ups and reviews of our current positions in preparation of the London and New York session. The session kickstarts 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time. So I recommend that you stay tuned in so you don't miss out on any of the insights that we will be sharing today. My aim in this community is to equip you with the knowledge and skills necessary to make your own independent trading decisions. Uh, trust me, the more time you spend with us, the better you will become at comprehending our analytical approach and utilizing the information gathered here to enhance your own trading decisions and strategies. So once again, I extend a warm welcome to you. 
and encourage you to actively engage in the comment section. Uh, so far this week, we have been monitoring four financial assets on our watch list, uh, which, has include, which includes the U.S. All Sports, the um, U.S. Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ, and we also have the AUDUSD, which was introduced to us by one of us in the house, that is Tim Roller, and then we have the XAU USD2 as well, which we have been monitoring. And though price action has been a little bit choppy in recent times due to the macroeconomic data that everyone in the market is looking forward to. But today, we will, I'm of the opinion that we will begin to see some traction. And in that regard, we want to position ourselves for this move. So stay tuned in so you don't miss out on this one. So with that being said here, we will be diving right into the business. And the first thing we normally do is to keep tabs with the fundamental factors that is likely going to be affecting the market sentiments today. And for those of you who have been with me for a while, you know how important this is, as these fundamental factors often manifest on the charts in technical patterns and price movement. By monitoring the economic calendar, we can identify potential correlations between key economic releases and specific technical patterns on the chart, hereby giving us valuable information and timing to position ourselves in such a way that we can capitalize on any potential move prior, during, and even after this economic event. Well, so far this week, we have bumped into a handful of impactful events from both the United States and the Australian economic docket. Uh, so for today, January, January 25th, so let's include, okay, I'll just take this one out and then include the Australian economic calendar into the watch list where is it all right here we go and i would like to include a medium impact media event so that we can have a broader view of what is going on what will be going on in the market today and here we are so before we go into this let me quickly run through yesterday's um, economic features yesterday we were looking forward to the s p global publication from the united states economic docket which of course uh, comprise the composite pmi manufacturing pmi and of course the services pmi and in fact the data that came in yesterday was phenomenal as it came in both beyond all expectations and even beyond the previous month data to emphasize the resilience of the u.s economy and we know what this simply means it means that uh, market are now not sure uh, now the interest rate cut for projected for match now may be pushed back um, uh, outrightly as right now um, the u.s economy is so resilient that um I, we 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 can say that there will be an interest rate cut anytime soon so with this information in hand and going into today's trading session, Thursday, January 25, we have a handful of impactful events today, but I will be only talking on the major ones that we should be looking out for. Now, the first one on the list here is the initial jobless claims, which is a key indicator that gives us an insight into the um, the situations within the labor sector of the United States, which of course is considered to be another sensitive sector that determines how well the U.S. economy is. Now, the initial jobless claim is usually released by the U.S. Department of Labor, and it measures the number of people filing first-time claims for state unemployment insurance. Generally, a larger than expected number indicates weakness in the U.S. labor sector, reflecting the negatively um, impacted U.S. economy, hereby resulting into a bearish situation for the U.S. dollar. And on the other hand, if the data comes in be, um, below 
the expected figure, then it shows there is buoyancy in the U.S. economy here by dovetailing to a positive traction in favor of the U.S. dollar. Now, from the previous data, that is the data that came in the month of December, it was 187,000. And from what is on ground right now, economists are projecting 200,000 as it is, which is not something um, interesting. It's not a good figure compared to what we saw last week. So we look forward to see what the actual data is going to be like. Will it be just as expected, below expectations, or even beyond expectations? Then the other one that we will be looking forward to, which of course everyone is looking forward to, is the gross domestic product annualized for quarter four. And uh, in fact, this is a very, very key economic indicator representing the annualized percentage change in the United States economic performance representing the total value of all goods and services produced within the U.S. borders. Well, as anticipation of this event can significantly impact market sentiment as it provides a comprehensive view of economic health and growth. Now, a higher than expected GDP growth often strengthens market confidence, leading to positive price action and potentially influencing the Federal Reserve decisions on interest rates so today everyone is looking forward to, to to this event even the federal reserve policymakers will want to see how well the u.s economy has expanded in the last quarter well the previous data came in at um, 4.9 percent and based on what is on ground though the economy is expected to expand but ex economists are looking at a two percent expansion for the last quarter so we shall look forward to what the actual data is going to be like now with all this information we have gathered here and as technical traders what we are going to be doing is to sniff through um, the current market conditions to look out for patterns and structures that we will use to position ourselves for the next move and one thing for sure we know is that the anticipation of this event usually reflect on the chart as price action so talking about price action let's dive right into the business and as usual the first asset we will be looking at this morning is going to be the u.s all sport and since the beginning of this week we've done pretty well on this asset as you will see we continue to buy this asset and the structural details we have here is more or less supporting uh, buying opportunities in this market uh, and especially the fundamental factors behind the scenes are also lending support to the ascent of the US oil prices. So for the sake of those who missed out on our earlier editions, let's quickly run through how the week started for us all so that we can all be on the same page so at the beginning of the week we were able to identify a range after noticing a bearish gap and in fact price was initially confined within the $73.35 level and the $72.80 area to emphasize the level of indecision that was going on in this market at that particular point in time and with the situation during our live session on Monday, we were around this area and of course we noticed this engulfing bullish candle that sprang out of the support line of that range to give us a signal that we are likely going bullish for this week. Now with our buy stop order sitting above the $73.35 level, we capitalized on our first buy position for the week as you will see right here. And remember that we had multiple entries projected like the $73.80 level, 
the $74.50 area and of course the $75 area where we position ourselves above these levels to maximize the potential of this bullish move and for those of us who capitalized on this opportunity we were able to scoop in a total or a minimum of 200 pips from these multiple buy entries before the bearish momentum came in. And on Tuesday, we begin to notice the inability of buyers to break out of that zone around the key level at the 75 and of course the $75.40 area to um, incite the idea that we could be witnessing um, a bearish move or let's say a temporary retracement as a result of profit taking activities. And as a result of this observation, we projected a reversal setup in the form of a double top structure where we had our neckline for this double top structure exactly around the $74.50 level. And I did emphasize here on, on Tuesday that um, this breakdown could be a retracement move. And as a result of that, I wouldn't be taking it. But if you are a counter trend trader, a scalper or one who enjoys taking counter trend opportunities, it will be a beautiful opportunity at the breakdown retest of that structure. And in fact, we saw price move about 110 pips move before another wave of bullish momentum happened. And following the API data on Wednesday, was it on Tuesday? Yes, the API data on Tuesday, we saw the market go into a choppy situation. And then during our live session yesterday, and coupled with the factors we talked about yesterday, we positioned ourselves above the $74.50 area. And one of the factors we mentioned here yesterday were um, the fact that price was still sitting above our ascending trend line and that if it goes ahead to break out of this descending trend line, we will be in to buy this asset. And of course, we saw what happened. Price continues to climb new highs. We had it more position at the breakout of the levels we did projected here yesterday had the $75 area and of course the $75.40 level. Well, this one right here was projected this morning, but uh, unfortunately, we have this position triggered before this live session. So at this point in time, you should be having a minimum of three buy positions running in profit, where the first position currently is running with about 175 pips in profit, while the second one is running with about 125, that's a total of 300 pips, while the third one is running with about 80 pips that's roughly about 450 to 500 pips there about which is not bad to start the week at all remember we 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 um scooped in about 200 pips at the beginning of the week so we've done very very well on this particular asset since this week has began and once again congratulations and kudos to everyone who took advantage of this profitable journey and for those of us who still have a buy position running at this point in time, well, it is high time we moved our stop losses to secure this current buy position. And if you would ask me anywhere around the previous high here, it's most appropriate to move all stop losses to. And please remember that you do want to be given enough breathing space for price action to move around. So move your stop losses Remember to give enough breathing space and let's see how the market will play out for today. Now, with a well-secured position at this juncture, what is going to be our next line of action as we look forward to the um, impactful features from the U.S. economic calendar today? That is the initial jobless claims, the GDP data, amongst other impactful events. Are we going to continue seeing the buy pressure continue its ascent or are there chances that profit taking activities could come in today? Well, uh, before we go into the technical details and of course looking at things from an holistic perspective, let's run through what is really moving price actions behind the scenes. In fact, there's quite some interesting um, development which I would love to share with you and also help you to have a, 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 a an insightful view 
of what is going on in the market so far. So price action reaching new technical highs could be attributed to uh, this uh, attributed to one. We have some various factors, of course. One we had yesterday how the People's Bank of China considered a potential medium term lending facility rate cut yesterday, which is bringing some momentum into this market. And of course, we also um, witnessed the decline in the U.S. crude oil stockpiles. Now, the expected um, MLF rate cuts along with the reduction in the reserve requirement ratio by the People's Bank of China is anticipated to inject additional liquidity and support economic growth, potentially stimulating consumption including crude oil products in China. And of course, we know how China happens to be the world's largest oil importer. And if the economy is not doing well, you know that that will affect the demand for this commodity. And remember, since last week, I have been talking about the sluggish recovery in China's economy based on the data that has been churning out from that uh, particular economic docket and I think as a response to all of this the Bank of um, China had made this recent development to pump in some liquidity into the market to make um, to serve as a cushion to the economy and I think this has um, signaled a positive traction into the market hereby boosting or giving a glimmer of hope for buyers that there will be increased demand for oil and this has skyrocketed the price of oil at this point. Then the other factor that we also witnessed here yesterday was the uh, weekly report from the Energy Information Administration, where it was revealed that there was a significant decline in crude oil stockpile for the previous week, standing at 9.23 million barrels for the previous week. Um, which drop off from 2.49 million from the previous from the upper one. Now, other factors like severe weather conditions such as storms and cold snap also disrupted crude oil production. Additionally, U.S. oil feed technology um, firm Baker um, uh, said they will be reducing spending on drills and well completions in 2024, reflecting their cautious approach of shale producers. In response to weak oil prices so all of these factors for me and coupled with the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East is supporting the ascent to buy this asset and for me I think it makes quite a lot of sense that we continue to look out for buying opportunity unless the market structure states otherwise now with all this information we have here please note that you want to be moving your stop losses as market participants anticipate the GDP data today which could bring in some level of volatility in this market. Now, with the information we've gathered behind the scenes, let's run through the daily time frame to have an holistic perspective into what is going on from a technical standpoint. Now, on the daily time frame, for those of you who have been with us since the beginning of, in fact, in the last three weeks, the structure has remained the same. And um, the first thing we observed after taking into consideration the nature of price action since the month of September of last year, it was quite clear that price action has been very bearish. In fact, after connecting the series of lower highs, we have this beautiful descending trend line to work with. Now, despite the strong bearish momentum in the last four to five months, something interesting happened at the beginning of the month of December. And that is the inability of sellers to break through that area around the $68 and $70 zone. And this kept on, this continued into the early days of this year as we saw a higher low. Sellers were finding it difficult to break down this area hereby supporting a potential reversal pattern. And with a closer look at the structure, we begin to notice how this whole situation is turning, revolving into a reversal pattern in the form of a double bottom structure where we had our neckline situated alongside with the key level at the $75 area. Now, what makes this level more interesting is the fact that it also 
shares a beautiful confluence with that descending trend line. So what this simply means is that if price breaks out of the descending of the neckline, price will also have broken out of the descending trend line to emphasize the fact that the trend line may no longer have the capacity to continue to negate the bullish attempt, hereby making us feel comfortable buying this asset. Now, in the last couple of days right now, you will see price has already broken out of the ascending trend line, sorry, the descending trend line and the neckline to give us some level of comfort to feel confident buying this particular asset. So as it is right now and with the information we have gathered here on the daily time frame, let's scale down into the lower time frame to see what is really going on, how we intend to project our prepare ourselves for today's trading session. So as it is right now on the four hours time frame and considering the fact that price has finally broken out of the neckline of that reversal pattern, I'm of the opinion and based on the factors we talked about earlier, I'm of the opinion that we shall continue to buy this asset. Now one thing that is clear on the one hour time frame is this beautifully aligned ascending trend line which has been supporting the bullish momentum in the last one week as you will see right here. Now you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community. As long as price remains above the ascending trend line, we shall continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying this asset. Now, as it is right now, price action just broke out of the previous hike, giving me another opportunity to capitalize on the uptrend move as I had the buy stop order this morning above this area. And if you had actually taken advantage of that one, well done to you. That means that you really adopting the analytical approach in this community and you understand what to look out for to jump into any positions. However, if you had missed out on this opportunity, it's okay. Um, let's see if the market will give us another chance to join this move. Now, from a technical standpoint, we do know that price action um, has the potential of coming back to retest a structure that it was broken out from to incite another wave of bullish momentum. So let's see if the market will come back to retest the structure. And if it does, the appearance of buy pressure and the inability of sellers to break through or continue to the downside will welcome more opportunities to buy. However, there is a caveat to this whole setup which I would like you to also take into consideration while monitoring this price action. Now, one of, this, one of them is this descendant trend line which uh, you will see we had some series of lower highs from Monday, Tuesday and a little bit of Wednesday's trading session giving us this beautiful descending trend line. And of course, if you are part of our live session yesterday, we did talk about the potential of breaking out of this trend line to make us feel comfortable in a buy position. Now, uh, if selling pressure persists here and then drops maybe into this area, we have an ascending trend line that we can use to join an uptrend move here. Or if price breaks down the ascending trend line, we can have we have a bus stop at this descending trend line where we could witness a potential retest of that structure. And of course, we know from a technical standpoint that when price breaks out of a trend line like this, there is a possibility of price coming back to retest the structure in anticipation of another wave of bullish momentum. So in as much as if sellers come in at any point in time to take us out of our buy position, um, the whole market outlook is still looking very bullish. We have different factors supporting this one. Um, we have a neckline of a reversal pattern broken on the daily time frame. We have the this ascending trend line in place. And we also have the descending trend line where price may come back to retest the structure in anticipation of another wave. So with all these parameters here, I still maintain a bullish bias on this particular asset. In fact, coupled with the um, um, development behind the scenes as well. Now, we also have another level here, which is the highest point for this week. That is the $76.30 level. I encourage you to mark out these levels just in case price decides to continue its new high, continue its handsets, then we will be 
had it more positions at the breakout of the structure. Now, there are two ways to which we can capitalize on this opportunity. For those of us who have been profitable since the beginning of the week, we can place a buy stop order above that structure just to test what is there. And if it doesn't work out, we know that we are only risking some of the profit we had made so far this week. However, if you are joining us for the first time, I would encourage you to wait for a retest of structure before jumping into that position. So this is my simple view on the US all spot for today. Very simple setup we have here. And as long as price remains above this ascending trend line, we shall feel comfortable in a buy position. If you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next 10 to 15 seconds off to see if there are any questions whatsoever before we move on to the next asset on our watch list. Okay, so I see um, a comment. Oh, Stimrola, I missed your comment earlier. How are you doing? Uh, you said you you sold AUD USD from 0 0.6602. Where should I set my stop loss? Um, well, um, when we get to the AUD USD, we'll talk about that, okay? So I hope you stay tuned in and I hope you're still around with us. Um, I see your comments. Um, Akindele, good morning to you. Akindele, glad to have you around with us. Trust you are doing very well. Uh, you say you are new here. I'm very excited to have you join us. I look forward to seeing more of you um, in this session. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, Tim Rola. I'm glad to hear from you. All right. So in the absence of no questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, we shall be moving right into the next asset on our watch list. <laughs> So the next asset on our watch list for today is the US Tech 100, popularly known as the NASDAQ. As we saw a phenomenal move yesterday, price breaking all barriers to test the 17,670 area for the first time. As we saw um, this move close near to my own personal TP target. And for those of us who capitalize on this opportunity, well done to you. Um, the US Tech 100 didn't start very well for us this week as we had some choppy situations. And we all know why that is. As market participants were caught within the dilemma of not of the better timing uh, of when the Federal Reserve is going to be cutting interest rate. And as a result, it took, quite a, it took quite a while for market participants to be able to confidently place aggr aggressive um, bets on this asset. Now, for the sake of those who are not part of our live session earlier, um, let's run through what really happened at the beginning of the week and what led to the situation that made us to buy this asset. Now, the week started on a strong bullish note, actually. We started at around the 17,300, just right here, where we had, uh, okay, it started around the 17,350, just right here, and that was serving as our first support line for this week. And as soon as price got into the 17,440, we begin to notice a barrier for buyers as sellers gradually push against the bullish pressure here. And remember that we had a buy stop order above the resistance line, which was actually triggered. But unfortunately, that position did not do well at all. As we saw price drop to the downside, taking us out of that position in a loss. Then we saw the support line got triggered here. And it was within this area for about um, 48 to about 60 hours. And during our live session on Tuesday, we begin to um, 
consider buying opportunities after noticing that the sell position couldn't go any further after continued buy pressure resumed around that area between the 17,300 and the 17,360. And what we I, what I said here, I can remember, was that all sell positions we should move all stop losses to break even because of the inability of sellers to break through the structure, hereby welcoming the idea of looking out for buying opportunity. So to help us capture the buy position, we, we did identify a level around the 17,360 where I mentioned that a breakout retest of the structure will be welcoming our our second buy position for the week. So we had our buy position triggered here and then we we had it one more at the breakout of the resistant line of the range at the 17,440 and during our live session yesterday we identified another level had the 17,540, which I mentioned that we will be looking out for a breakout retest of that structure to capitalize on that uptrend move. And uh, for the last um, th two days, we saw price move phenomenally well. Our first buy position moved about three over 300 pips. The second buy position moved over 220 pips. That's over 500 pips. And the third one right here, from yesterday's trading session moved about 120 pips. So we are clocking about 650 pips in profit before the sell position came in. And I do hope you moved your stop losses accordingly. Like we always say in this community, whenever price action moves significantly well in our favor, we want to be moving our stop loss to secure the current buy position. And if you had done that, you must have been taken out of all buy positions with a reasonable amount of profit and once again congratulations to everyone who capitalized on this opportunity now with a situation we have right now we have no trades running on the u.s tech at this juncture what is going to be our next line of action for today how do we intend to capitalize on the next move well with a situation we have here um, let's run through the daily time frame. Let's see what is going on from an holistic perspective and refresh our memories as to what we were looking at at the beginning of the week. Now, if you remember vividly, we what we did on the daily time frame was to take into consideration the nature of price action since the month of August of last year. That's an historical data of about um, five, five, six months, I think four five months i think and what we were able to come up with was an ascending trend line which you will see here and in fact this trend line played a major role in determining the direction of price action throughout the course of this month now we saw how at some point it was a buying niche at some point it was a selling niche however since the ascending trend line was broken out of in the beginning of december this level had continued to hold by pressure for us. Now to make things easy for us to capitalize on the next move, we identified our key level at that psychological area at the $17,000 level. Now at the beginning of the week, we were looking at the potential that since price action is at a new high, and we know how price behaves whenever it gets to a new high, it takes some time for price to acclimatize to that zone, and as a result of this psychological expectation, the chances of seeing choppy situations, retracement moves, and consolidation phase is always peculiar with this kind of zone and structure. So as a result of this understanding, we were looking at two things that price may come back to retest the structure to incite another wave of bullish momentum or it may evolve into an uptrend continuation pattern, which was what actually happened to incite this uptrend move. However, price action has continued to find new highs as it is right now. And um, because of the new territory we have right now, uh, we cannot rule out the possibility that we could witness some profit-taking activities as those who had capitalized on this bullish momentum since the beginning of the year may want to start considering selling 
or taking some profit off the chart and this could result into a retracement phase to the downside and if we look at the distance between where price action is right now and that um, key level and of course the ascending trend line it dovetails to over 500 pips so we are also going to keep our options as open and dynamic as possible so that we can position ourselves for both selling and buying opportunities now with the information we have gathered here on the daily time frame let's scale back down into the one hour time frame to see what is really going on in this market now if you look at the structure closely and um, looking at what has been going on since the since last week's trading session i'm beginning to notice a um, series of higher lows of course um, giving us an ascending trend line to work with and if we can draw out this correctly let's see what we will have here so we have something like this to work with uh, for today's trading session so i will do some little adjustment after bringing out my candle chart and here we go so you will see that since last week um, tuesday this trend line has been playing a major role in guiding price action it was a selling niche at this point it was selling here before it was broken out of last week friday and since the breakout of this ascending trend line on last week friday price action has remained above this ascending trend line and you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community as long as price remains above the ascending trend line we shall continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying this asset now, if we zoom into the current structure after the strong bearish momentum that happened yesterday, you will see that price action after testing or coming close to that ascending trend line, we notice some buy pressure, especially during the Asian session. As you will see, uh, sellers have been finding it difficult to break through this area. Now, if price continues to stay above our ascending trend line we obviously want to be looking out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying so yesterday this 17,540 words um, triggered our thought position on this asset so we will be using it again today to guide more buying opportunities in this market so i have a buy stop order above the 17,540 to capitalize on the next bullish momentum and of course, we have a previous high at the 17,000, let's see, $17,660 level, I guess. Yes, I think that is quite okay. We have $17,660 level. That is the highest point for this week. And if price goes ahead to break out of the structure, I will be adding more buy positions to my existing trade. However, in as much as we are looking out for buying opportunities here, yeah, we cannot ignore the potentials that sellers could come in. Remember what I said earlier on the daily time frame, when price gets into a new high like this, it usually takes quite some more time before price acclimatizes to that structure. And we could see retracement move as a result of profit-taking activities, chopper situations, and of course, consolidations will happen. Now, if this bearish pressure continues in such a way, that it breaks down this ascending trend line and retests the ascending trend line then i'm of the opinion that it will be it will make quite a lot of sense to look out for selling opportunities at the breakdown retest of that structure and then looking at a potential tp target maybe around that 17,000 area and also remember that we have an ascending trend line we spotted on the higher time frame and as soon as price gets into that ascending trend line we move all stop losses secure the position and wait to see how the market will react to that structure and if price breaks down the structure we look out for more selling opportunities and if price finds reversal pattern on top of this trend line then we want to be buying at the breakout retest of that structure so we are at a crucial juncture in this market so let's exercise patience and you can see how this newly identified ascending trend line is going to be playing a major role in guiding our trading decisions for today so i encourage us all to mark out these levels on our chart as you will be needing them as a reference point to 
um, guide our independent trading decisions for today. So this is my simple view on the US Tech 100. If you have any questions or you need some clarifications whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. So I will be taking the next five to 10 seconds off to see if there are any questions before we move on to the next asset on our watch list. All right, um, I saw some couple of comments here, which is um, concerning to me, and I want to call your attention to it. Please, guys, beware of spammers directing you to external platforms or WhatsApp groups for financial advice. They may be scammers trying to con you. Extreme speed has no association with such individuals. Please stay vigilant and prioritize your financial safety within the extreme speed live platform thank you very much guys be very careful all right i see um your comment here from ashitaka glad to have you around ashitaka you said you missed about 45 minutes it's okay um you said can you quickly repeat usd jpy after gold please i'm so sorry we did not um, include usd jpy into our watch list for this week instead of the usd jpy someone amongst us here chose aud usd and i had no other choice than to treat the aud usd so we have been monitoring the aud usd in place of the usd jpy i hope you understand this ashitaka all right so in the absence of no further questions, I want to assume that we are all on the same page. And in that regard, let's move right into the last asset on our watch list. So I hope um, Steamroller is still in the house. Um, <laughs> Steamroller, you sure was, um, you gave us this asset at the beginning of the week. That is the AUD USD. And um, this market has been a little bit choppy since the beginning of the week. In fact, not a little bit choppy, very, very choppy. And this is not coming to us as a surprise at all as I did emphasize that um, this is expected, especially in a week that is laced with um, high impactful event from both the United States and the Australian economic docket. And so far since the beginning of the week, you can see that it is evident the prevailing uncertainty in this market as price action has been confined within the 0.66 135 and the 0 
zero zero area to emphasize the level of indecision going on in the market at the beginning of this week we saw um, reports from the um, Australian economic docket let me run through the economic calendar once again uh, the judo bank and the s p global publication on the manufacturing pmi the services pmi and composite pmi which all came in had a very good figure as they were beyond um, the previous data on all parameters and that resulted in some beautiful traction in favor of the aussie dollar remember we did capitalize on some buy positions but they didn't really do very well before they came back into the entry area and of course we moved our stop losses at both instances um giving us me small profit maybe or worst case scenario break even depending on where you had moved your stop losses to however the recent decline you see yesterday we had the privilege of buying again remember and i did mention during our live session yesterday that we should move all stop losses and if you had done so price will have taken you out of that buy position as well and the recent decline in the aussie that was yesterday was not coming to us as a surprise to you uh, remember that the um, s p global publication from yesterday came in very very phenomenal indicating how resilient the u.s economy is now this resulted in the aussie dollar uh, facing a second consecutive day of decline and downward pressure on the aud usd pair came after that positive s p global uh, publication was released from the united states on wednesday now, the optimistic data may reduce the likelihood of rate cuts by the Federal Reserve. We've talked about this countless of times in March, leading to a drop in the AUD USD. However, if you look at the technical structure here on the one hour time frame, you will see that despite the fact that price has been within a range, uh, you will see that um, those sellers have been trying to push price to the downside due to the U.S., the resilient U.S. economy. But one thing you will notice on this chart is that every time price comes into the zone, we saw our buyers come in to negate all attempts by the sellers to break through this area. In fact, on Tuesday, it was a very strong move, but buyers came in, negated that bearish momentum. We also saw what happened here again during yesterday morning. Buy pressure came in again. And during the Asian session, we also saw buy pressure resume around this area. And what does this tell us? It tells us that that area holds a strong buying niche or holds a strong memory for buying power. So as a result of this, we have a temporary demand zone just right within the 0 0.65675 and the 0 0.65500 area to emphasize the strength of the buyers at this point in time. And if price remains above this level, I don't think it makes quite a lot of sense for us to consider selling this particular asset. So at this point, and considering the fact that price remains above this demand zone, it makes quite a lot of sense for us to look out for buying opportunities so as a result of these um buying above the support line of the range remember that at the beginning of the week we had our range right here where we had the resistant line of the range at the 0 0.66135 and then the support line of that range at the 0 0.66 five eight two five area now the support line here makes a lot of sense for us to buy this asset keep a buy positions above that area and continue to look out for more buying opportunities if price goes ahead to break out of the 0 0.65950 and if it continues in such a way that it breaks out of the resistant line we look out for more buying opportunities and a further breakout of the 0 0.66200 level will be welcoming buy positions. 
However, in as much as we are looking out for buy positions at this point, let me quickly show you something on the four hours time frame so we can have an holistic perspective into what is really, really going on in this market. Now, if you remember vividly at the beginning of the week after considering the nature of price action since the month of October, that's an historical data of about four to five months, it is quite obvious that price action has been very very bullish and in fact we have an ascending trend line after capturing all the pivot lows here giving us something to work with and for the fact that price remains above this major ascending trend line it makes quite a lot of sense that we look out for buying opportunities unless this ascending trend line is broken to the downside now scaling back down into the one hour time frame to look at how things have been playing out since last week Thursday you will see price has been finding higher lows here and I think we should be having a new trend line based on the recent development in this market and if we can draw this out correctly I think we should be having something like this to work with for today so if we bring back our candle chart and readjust this so that it can capture majority of this pivot low we have something like this to work with and you know how we use our ascending trend lines in this community as long as price remains above this ascending trend line we shall continue to look out for patterns and structures that support the idea of buying um sorry to cut here i hope steamroller is in the house steamroller are you around please if you are please let me know in the comment section so at this point um it makes quite a lot of sense to look out for buying opportunities and use this multiple levels to maximize the potential of the bullish move and like i was saying earlier the only condition while we try to keep the, our options as open as possible, the only condition that we want to see on this chart that will make us feel comfortable selling this asset is for price to uh, break down this area. In fact, I will feel more comfortable if the lowest point for this week is broken to the downside, which interestingly is at the psychological area around the 0.655 um how many five is that i think um two fives okay it's five five zero zero level to feel comfortable selling and while we we will feel comfortable selling below the 0 0.6550 area because at that time price will have taken out all the buy positions around this area since the beginning of the week and that will be a good sign that sellers may likely take over the market going forward however uh, it's possible that we can actually sell even before the lowest point is broken to the downside and that is if this ascendant trend line is broken and then i want to see confirmations like signs that buyers are finding it difficult to climb back above the ascending trend line which would reflect on the chart as continuous selling pressure below the structure then we can have a sell stop order below the 0 0.65675 and then if it continues to the downside then we can sell the breakdown um, of the 0 0.65500 area but for me i will feel very confident selling below the structure is not until price break down this area that we can now feel confident that sellers may likely go to the downside and if it goes ahead to break down our key level at the 0 0.653 we then we had more sell positions to our existing trade so this is how we are going to be managing our positions on the AUD USD today uh, mark out that ascending trend line is going to be playing a major role in guiding our decisions if uh, price stay above the ascending trend line we hold on to a bullish bias but a breakdown retest of the ascending trend line will start welcoming selling opportunities in this market so let's see how this will play out going forward um Okay, I see your comments, Timula. Glad you are you are around. And if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to let me know in the comment section. I wouldn't be taking a break because I'm already out of time. So I will just run through the final and my favorite asset on our watch list for today, which of course is going to be 
the XAU USD, popularly known as the gold spot. And on the XAU USD, what's a 24? In fact, the first since the beginning of the week, um, we have been in a choppy market condition. The price action has been range bound, as you will see. If we look at this from a technical standpoint here on the one hour time frame, it has been more of price trading between the 2032 and the $2,019.50 level, which actually was our first range we identified at the beginning of the week. And with our range identified, coupled with the fact that price action was sitting above an ascending trend line, it made quite a lot of sense for us to consider buying this asset. Yesterday, we had our buy position triggered at the breakout of the 2030-2030 zone, but unfortunately, that position did not do very well at all as the data that came in from the S&P Global incited a, an immediate reaction in favor of the US dollar, taking us out of all our buy positions in a loss on that one leading to the breakdown of the ascending trend line to incite a sell-off to the downside. And for those of us who capitalized on the breakdown of the ascending trend line, well done to you. For me, I missed out on that opportunity as it happened so fast because I never expected that um, the figures that came in yesterday will favor the US dollar. And Unfortunately, I missed out on that one, but I took this one, which we already marked out during our live session yesterday, that we shall be selling the breakdown retest of the $2,019.50 level, which actually happened, and we saw price move about um, 90 pips thereabout before this buy pressure began during the later part of the New York session. And of course, if you had moved your stop losses accordingly, you must have been taken out of that um, sell position with a reasonable amount of profit or at a worst case scenario, break even, depending on where you moved your stop losses to. So as it is right now, all sell positions have been closed as gold prices face challenges in recovering from the previous day's substantial losses during the Asian session stroke the United Kingdom trading session. And of course, uh, if we go outside this box, the US dollar index continues its consolidative movement amidst uncertainty around the Federal Reserve interest rate court timeline. And as it is right now, the market participant appears to be exhibiting an indecision influenced by the persistent geopolitical tensions and as you see, traders await the release of the fourth quarter U.S. GDP growth figures later today for potential short-term trading opportunities. So how do we intend to manage these positions for today? Well, let me just quickly refresh our memories as to what we saw on the higher time frame. So I wouldn't go to the daily, but just let's run through the four hours time frame quickly to see what is going on here now on the four hours time frame and for those of you who are with me since the beginning of the week this is going to be familiar um the first thing we observed on the four hours time frame was that demand zone around the 2005 and the 2015 dollar area which you will see had played a major role in negating all attempt by the sellers to break through that area as you will see buy pressure resumed here we saw what happened at the beginning of the year we saw what happened around this point um, last week and look at during the later part of last week buy pressure again and look at what is happening right now despite the strong bearish momentum we saw yesterday as soon as price got into this area we begin to notice the resumption of buy pressure again and what does this tell us it tells us that this demand zone is very very strong and it has a memory for buying power now in addition to this demand zone we also acknowledge the fact that price action since the beginning of the year was going through um the um the end product of um profit taking activities as price continues to find lower highs transitioning into a descending channel 
Now, when we connected the series of lower highs, it gave us the resistant line of the descending channel. And while we connected the series of lower low, it gave us the support line of the descending channel. And with the situation here, we saw that as soon as price tested, the resistant line of that descending channel, it dropped to the downside, breaking down our ascending trend line for the week around this point. Now, as it is right now, that price is finding buy pressure. Um, hold on a second. Buy pressure within, within our identified demand zone at the beginning of the week. Let me extend it out a little further so that we can see how important and crucial the juncture we have is right now. So we are within the bias territory and not unless this zone is broken down to the downside that we can feel comfortable um, of selling this particular asset. So I needed us to see what things are looking like on the four hours time frame so we can have a better perspective into this market. So with that being said, let's scale back down into the one hour time frame to see how we will be positioning ourselves for the next move. Now, zooming into the current structure, as you will see here, um, the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20 hours, let me put it at that, has shown some resilience in the buyers, has every attend by sellers to break through that area around the 2011 and $2,013.50 area has been negated by buyers at every point in time. And considering the fact that this buy pressure is happening within that demand zone we identified on the four hours time frame, I'm of the opinion that we shall be looking out for buying opportunities today. Now, the buy opportunity could come in different ways. It could come in such a way that it could be another platform that will incite a phenomenal moves in bullish momentum to the upside, or it could come in form of a retracement of this impulsive leg to test the ascending trend line that was broken yesterday to incite a sell-off. And if you look at the ascending trend line, it beautifully shares a confluence with the resistant line of the descending channel we identified on the four hours time frame. So as it is right now, I want to hold on to a bullish bias where I will be looking out for buying opportunities above the $2,019.50 level and then looking out to add more buy position above the $2,026 area and then I will keep on adding more position at the breakout of the $2,030. Now there is a caveat to this bullish setup. If price gets into this ascending and descending trend line right here, kindly move all your stop losses to secure the current buy position as depending on how price reacts to that confluence between the ascending and descending trend line will welcome um, either buying or selling opportunities. Now to give you a quick review, if price will break out of this descending trend line and in 2032, we had more positions and if price continues to climb, the breakout of the $2,039.50 level will welcome more buy positions. But if price gets into the strained line and it begins to find selling pressure, that is buyers finding it difficult to break through and re re um, transitions into something like a reversal pattern, like a double top structure, then we mark out the neckline of the reversal pattern and sell the breakdown and join the decline to the downside. So on this one, I'm looking out for buying opportunities as it is because of, well, the geopolitical tensions in the Middle East. And then um, the GDP that are coming up today, we don't know what it will bring. But based on the technical structures and the inability of sellers to break through the zone, I maintain a bullish bias at this point, looking out for buying opportunities above the $2,019.50 level. However, if this bullish setup fails in such a way that price instead continues to drop to the downside and in fact takes out all the buy positions within this range, then I will be looking out for selling opportunities at the breakdown retest of the $2011 area 
then had more positions at the breakdown retest of our key level at the $2,005 level. So it's a simple setup we have on the XAUUSD for today. So I encourage us all to mark out these levels on our chart as we will be needing them as a reference point to guide our trading decisions for today. So basically, our center of focus for today is between the $2,019.50 level and the $2,011 area where depending on the direction of the breakout will give us an insight into where price is likely going for today. So mark out the level, exercise patience and wait for structures to mature before jumping into any positions. So I think on this note, um, we shall be calling it a day here. And um, before we do, I will give the next five to 10 seconds to see if there are any questions before we go ahead to close the extra speed live technical session. All right, Timirola, thank you very much. I wish you also the best of luck today and have a great day at work too. Uh, Maverick08 is asking, what do they recommend selling or buying? Um, I think we talked about that um, in detail just now. And besides, I don't know which assets you are talking about. I did mention this. I talked about the potentials we are looking out for while we keep our options as open as possible. We are looking at breakout of the $2,019.50 level for buying opportunities here and the breakdown of the $2,011 area for selling opportunities on the XAUSD. And I did talk about some other factors um, that could happen on the journey of any of these possibilities that we talk about here. So I hope you were around when I was discussing this. Probably you dropped a question um, earlier than my conclusion on this asset. How thank you, Leonardo DV. Glad to have you till the end of the session. I'm very glad you did. I uh, trust you found it very useful. And on this note, and in the absence of no questions, I want to round off on today's trading session. And it has been a wonderful moment with you guys. I really, and as usual, enjoyed every single moment. Um, today, we were able to attend to four of the major assets on our watch list which includes the U.S. All Sports, the U.S. Tech 100. We also talked about the AUD USD and finally the XAU USD, all of which we were able to identify simple trading setups that we will use to guide our trading decisions for today. And um, I hope you marked out the levels as we have projected during the illustration. If you do, well done to you. And all we just need to do is exercise patience and allow the structures to mature before jumping into any positions. And remember that today is um, is laced with some mid-tier and, of course, high impactful event, uh, which could bring in some volatility in this market. So it's important that you have your risk management in place. Remember that every decision we make in the financial market is more or less an educated guess. Um, until price action eats your TP target. And with this understanding in mind, you want to ensure you have a well-defined risk management strategy in place to mitigate against any sudden pullback that may happen against our uh, intended direction. For those who joined us for the first time, I do hope you are able to gain one or two things from what we discussed here today. And if you did, um, look forward to seeing more of you same time um, tomorrow, 10 a.m. UTC, 11 a.m. West African time, as we come here again to review how well these assets have been doing and at the same time prepare ourselves for the last trading day of the week, which promises to be another exciting and insightful session as we prepare to be part of the markets um, rounding off of trading activities ahead of the weekend. Uh, trust me, guys, um, for those who are joining us for the first time, the more time you spend with us in this community, the better you get to understand our analytical approach and eventually be able to use the information gathered here to make your own independent trading decisions. So on this note, I wish us all the best of luck today and looking forward to seeing you same time tomorrow. 10 a.m. UTC, 
11 a.m. West African time as we come here to round off our trading activities for this week. Trade smart, trade consciously, and do have a wonderful evening, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>